Our final unit is biochemistry. Biochemistry is the chemistry of molecules in life. So we're kind of using organic chemistry, but we're going to say, how does it apply to things in our body, in plants, and all other animals? In organic chemistry, we focused on naming and functional groups and reactions. In biochemistry, we're going to use all of those names, functional groups, and reactions and put them together to see how they work in the body. So first we'll look at what biochemistry is, and then we'll look at the classes of those biological compounds. So generally speaking, biochemistry involves the study of biomolecules, which are organic compounds, sometimes multiple functional groups, uh, the chemistry of biological processes, so these are things that are organic reactions, but done in a biological setting, and finally, the effects of various chemicals on biological materials. Obviously, we're not going to talk about all of them because there is a lot to talk about. But we're going to talk about some generalizations of the biomolecules, their processes, and the effects of various chemicals on those biomolecules. So what are biomolecules? Biomolecules are organic compounds of biological origin. That just means that they're made by humans, animals, plants, something like that. Next, we know that they contain more than one functional group. So oftentimes the functional group is the same and it repeats over and over, but they will have more than one functional group. Because of this, we will classify them as a type of functional group, but we won't be giving you the names of those specifically. I won't be asking you to name each one like hexane and decane and things like that. In this class, we're actually going to focus on four, I know it says three, four important classes of biomolecules. The first three are important because they're things that you'll find in nutrition. So think about in nutrition, what are the major things that we think of? Most people can think of this by look, thinking about their dietary function. So oftentimes we'll have a low fat diet. So fats are one of the classes that we're looking at. But we don't actually call them fats in science. We're going to call lipids, which is a little bit broader category than fats. And so it includes some things like steroids and some vitamins. Next, you've probably heard of low-carbohydrate diets, and basically that's a low sugar. We would have called it sugars in normal parlance, but in science, again, we're going to call it a carbohydrate. And finally, you may have heard of high-protein diets, and in science and in common parlance, we're going to both call that protein, and that is our third type. And our fourth one I'm going to add in here, number four is our nucleic acids. You probably know them as DNA and RNA, and we're going to talk about that at the end of this unit. Again, there are other biomolecules, but this covers the vast majority of biomolecules in the human body. We will be talking about specific biochemical reactions in each of the individual sections later. But for the moment, I just want to remember that in the biological system, the cells are about 60% water, which means that all of the reactions that we look at and all of the systems that we look at will be taking place in aqueous solutions. We're going to be looking at solubility, deciding if something is soluble in water or insoluble in water. And because these are organic compounds, recall that we're going to be looking to see is it polar or nonpolar, and that will determine its interactions with water and its reactivity. A second thing is to know some of the terminology that we use in biology, and that word is metabolism. And metabolism is a combination of two things. It is both the breakdown of biological molecules and the synthesis of other biological molecules. The breakdown is called catabolism, and the synthesis is called anabolism. You may have heard of the term anabolic steroids. Anabolic steroids are steroids that are designed to build up. There are other steroids that we use that are not used to build up muscles. Those steroids might be used as an anti-inflammatory to keep the inflammation down instead of building up muscles. So metabolism is the breakdown and synthesis of biological molecules in all kinds of cells and tissues of any kind of living system. So you may have heard of basal metabolic rate. And the basal metabolic rate is the amount of energy that's required for us to break down and synthesize things within the body. And it tells us how many calories we use on a regular basis. 
when we are inactive. After classifying biomolecules, we're going to look at the functions of those biomolecules. There are two major functions. The first one is the being used as a source of energy, and the second one is that they are used to build structures. So in this class, we're going to focus on the much smaller particles, the biomolecules that form things like your organs and uh, blood cells and things like that. We'll save those how the organs work for your biology courses. So we're going to start this by looking at the most ill-defined of all of these biomolecules, and that is lipids.